Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada with another series of unboxing videos, your personal favorites. No, not quite. So, um, our last video was the Boulder Hall, which is right behind me as you can see. Uh, fantastic amplifiers and wonderful, wonderful opportunity for any of you who are in the market for a pair or more. Anyway, today I'm going to show you another hall, Wilson Alex. Um, Th this is superb, a, a spectacular speaker. I remember the first time I saw it and absolutely fell in love with it and owned a pair. And then of course uh, the Alex V came in and I bought that and then of course then the XLFs came in and I bought those. So uh, let me tell you very quickly about what the uh, Alex is, uh, the basics behind it and then the details. So first of all, the speakers were originally made from 2016 and they were finally uh, discontinued in 2021, so about a five year run. Um, they were designed right at the same time as the big Wham, the Wham Chronosonic. Um, when David Wilson was still alive, both Daryl and David worked together to uh, 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 to develop both speakers. Uh, David was in charge of the Wham exclusively, but he used um, Daryl, his son, to help him to develop it because by then, of course, David was also uh, quite sick. And then while Daryl was helping his father, uh, he also took a lot of the ideas that they had and. Uh, uh, put them into the uh, Alexis, which again I'll talk about in a moment. So uh, let me just take the grills off and I'll show you what they look like. Well, actually, let me give you the dimensions first since we've got them here. So as you can see, they are 62, 9 and 3, uh, 32 inches high, uh, 15 and 3 quarter inches wide at the base, and 26 and 25, 32 inches deep. 452 pounds each or 205 kilograms. Um, sensitivity is 91 dB. It is a nominal 4 ohm impedance, however, it does go down to 1.5 ohms at uh, 2.8 kilohertz. So you do need a powerful amplifier with current, especially if you like to play it loudly. Room average response is 20 to 31 kilohertz plus or minus 3 dB. Now, here I want to sort of take a pause and just say something. There are a number of speakers that are rated down to quite low uh, frequencies, like you know, 32, 35, and so on. And by real world standard, that is in fact quite a low frequency. Uh, first of all, there's very, very few instruments that can go very low, acoustic instruments that is. Um, so to be able to go down that, that low is, is uh, quite remarkable. But there's a difference between being able to measure at one meter away um, uh, uh, that kind of response and hearing a speaker at your seat, at your listening position, 8, 10, 12 feet away, where the bass truly develops at 20 hertz with power. It doesn't just go low and gives you a hint of the bass. We're talking about power, where it, it goes through your body and, and, and envelops you. And, and, and then when the recording doesn't have that bass, but it's recorded, for example, in a large uh, acoustic space, you can get a sense of the acoustic space because of the air motion or the, the, the sense of the ambience in the hall. I don't know how to describe it if, if you've never heard it. Hopefully you, you understand some of you. Okay, so uh, let me take the grills off and we'll go through all the different drivers. So first of all, uh, these are here for sale. Uh, belongs to a client of mine who did some serious upgrades. So, you know, for, for the rest of us, the Alex would be a game game over this would be the end game speaker uh, for some other clients who are very very fortunate they can do much more and the client did much 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 more anyway so um, original owner uh, is in excellent condition we haven't had a chance to finish uh, uh, um, detailing it or anything like that but uh, condition wise physically I would say let's just conservatively say very very good um, yeah, as you can see, there's still a bit of dust here. We'll uh, finish cleaning it all up. Anyway, um, it's a five-driver design. 
the woofers are, let's see here, okay, uh, one 12 and a half inch, one 10.5 inch, one 7 inch, uh, one inch tweeter, and a 4 inch uh, mid range. So that's a 7 inch and that's a 4 inch mid range. Or for the rest of the world, that is 31.75 centimeters, 26.67 centimeters. 17.78 um, centimeters, 14.61 centimeters, and 2.54 centimeters. Now, all of these drivers, uh, with the exception of the woofers, have their own separate enclosure. I'm not sure, because the factory doesn't specify it, whether these two woofers have, have a separated enclosure inside, so I don't know that for sure, but all of these have independent enclosures. The entire enclosure is made of the proprietary Wilson X material. It's uh, the third generation, except for the mid-range. Mid-range uses the S material, which Wilson developed a number of years ago specifically for the uh, mid-range drivers. Oh, I mentioned that it was designed in conjunction with the WAM. And what's fascinating is that the WAM uses these identical drivers for the base um, for the base part portion of the speakers. So what you have here is in fact the uh, Wilson Wham woofers. The tweeter is a variation of the Wham tweeter and uh, these mid-ranges are now seen more and more in the other Wilson speakers. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's done. I'm on a good day, 5'8", five, 5'8 five, and a half, 5'9", I don't really know. So the speakers are roughly slightly shorter than I am well, with shoes on. Now, I'm gonna show you what they independently, independently look like in terms of the modules and how the adjustments work, okay? So come over here, by the way, so this is my XVX. This is what the Alex looks like and uh, side by side and the finish I, I don't know if the lights will catch it this is gal uh, it's it's a uh, metallic uh, metallic black yeah so the xvx is metallic black with um, uh, if you come close you'll see little metallic flakes whereas this is piano black so it's darker um, well you know what piano black looks like so this is the back of the speaker you can see this window here and these are all the different resistors for the different drivers to protect the drivers in the event that either the amplifier has a problem or there's distortion com coming out of the amplifier. Um, these resistors are there to try and protect the drivers if possible. Now all the resistors are also mounted directly to um, uh, metal heat sinks so again it wicks away the heat as quickly as possible and very easy to replace them. Um, the, the glass cover literally just pulls off you put in the new, uh, take off the new, uh, the old resistors um, because they're attached with binding posts and then just put the new ones in and away you go. So very very easy as far as if you ever have to do anything to them. Then at the bottom here, you will see a port. Now, uh, Wilson first introduced this port technology uh, back with the Alexandria, and it was called the XLF. So you can either have the port facing the back, or if you prefer, you can have the port facing the front. And all you have to do is take the cover off. Actually, we have one here. Take this cover off. Um, and inside, there is a custom-sized uh, foam insert. You take that out along with it. Then you put the foam insert in here, then you uh, take this aluminum trim piece here out, put the cover on it, and then on the front you put this trim piece o over it and that's, that's how you do it. And the way you will determine whether you want the port in the front or in the back is you have to experiment uh, to see which gives you the best base result, uh, most dynamic, most extended base result, uh, most extended base and so on. If your speakers typically, for example, have to be very far away from the, from the wall, from the wall in front of uh, behind the speakers, uh, um, sometimes having the port in the front might give you more tactile, more dynamic bass. Uh, um, so experiment. It's nice to be able to do that. So um, this array is the lower mid-range and tweeter. So let me just take the grill off again so I can show you. By the way, I, I believe this was the first time where Wilson had done this whereby they used two different size mid-range drivers to cover the critical mid-range. So in the past they would use the same size drivers and now it's a 7 inch and a 4 inch. 
So the seven inch covers the lower mid range, and then the uh, four inch covers the upper mid range, and then that's the tweeter over there. And you can see there are two separate modules. This is the tweeter module. That's the lower mid range module. And when when you install it, you put this entire assembly. It's all one through the front of the speaker. You need to have two people helping you so that um, the person in the back guides the speakers through the wings. Uh, so I'm going to call this the wings. Okay. So uh, one person feeds the module, the other person in the back grabs it and then very gently and you want to guide it between the wings so you don't damage the paint. And then uh, the back of this module, which has a spike at the bottom, will then sit on this step here. So I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so that's the stair step. And again, the manual goes into all the details. Your installer or your Wilson dealer will, will do all the setup for you. Um, and, and in a moment, uh, or, or Alex will later on show you close-ups as to how all these things can be adjusted uh, based on the measurements. So this stair step, um, um, will be adjusted according to the uh, tables that are in the back of the manual based on your listening height and your distance from the speakers. Um, and the stair step has two adjustments. Uh, one is the physical location of the stair step forward or back. And number two, the, uh, the back of the lower mid-range driver is actually angled towards your listening position. So again, that will be determined by how tall you are in terms of your listening position and where you are from the speakers. And then once you've done that, the tweeter, uh, the tweeter itself then gets adjusted. So you'll see this uh, uh, bolt or post. And again, I can't really show it easily just the way it is like this. Again, your, your installer will do so. But based on the uh, manual, you will um, adjust this. And when you turn this, well, first of all, you loosen this, and then this whole uh, tweeter module will pull out or move in according to where it needs to be. There's a little uh, guide, if you will, uh, at the very top here. In fact, let me see if I can show you. Yeah, here. So uh, there is actually a metal arrow that points down into this channel and the channel has markings. So again, the manual will tell you exactly where it needs to be. You will move the tweeter to where the, the, the channel is supposed to meet the uh, arrow and once it's there, then you tighten this. Okay, And after you tighten that, you're now ready to basically put everything in. Actually, you put everything in and then you make this final adjustment. So that's for the lower mid-range and tweeter. Then the upper mid-range again feeds in from the front. Now very very important this w the, the, the wings angle in as you can probably see from the back they angle in so the upper mid-range module does not go down it won't fit like that it must be fed through the front okay very important otherwise you will damage the paint so again feed it through the front the, bo the bottom has um, the, the, the spike and the spike sits on the stair step again, just like the lower mid-range enclosure. And then after you've done that, you adjust the position of the uh, block as well as then the stair step itself. So when you're all done, it literally means that the, the three modules are time aligned relative to the base enclosure. And as far as I'm aware, Wilson is the only speaker company that allows you to time align to such precision. Um, there are all kinds of speakers, of course, that have sloping front, sloping, uh, uh, sloping back, I should uh, yeah, sloping front baffle that uh, gives you some sense of time alignment, but it's a generic time alignment. It's not like a fine focus on a camera. You cannot fine tune, whereas this, you literally can fine tune it exactly to your requirements and specifications. So, and then after you're done, uh, these wires are connected to the modules. One is for the tweeter, one is for the lower mid-range, one is for the upper mid-range. Your speaker wires connect to the bottom here, and away you go. So that is the Alex, the original Alex. The Alex V is an update, and uh, um, I don't have them here at the moment. But maybe uh, in the B-roll, Alex will just show you what this room has sort of become. I think in this room we now have, uh, I don't know, eight, $900,000 worth of uh, speakers.
we actually have more, but we couldn't fit them into this room. Anyway, um, so the price, the standard finish was 109,000 US dollars or 147,150 Canadian. This, because it's the black piano finish, is an upcharge. It's 111,500 US dollars or 150,525,000 Canadian dollars. We're selling these for firm 75,000 Canadian. Now, if you check online, you will see that they variously go between 70,000 US, US to about 80,000 US dollars. So 70 to 80,000 US. We're selling these for 75 Canadian, which is what, 60 something, 63? Uh, US dollars. Uh, so it's a heck of a buy compared to whatever the market is. It doesn't have crates, uh, so hopefully somebody local uh, uh, will buy them. If we have to make the crates, it can be done at your cost, and we will make sure that the crates are, are made properly so that they secure and protect the speakers. And um, of course, any kind of shipping and so on would be your responsibility. If you have, to, if we have to ship it outside of Canada. Uh, you have to think about uh, any kind of import duties that you might have, brokerage and so on. Again, that's something that uh, I can give you some details, but I wouldn't know any specifics. You'd have to talk to your broker about that. So if you have any questions or if you're interested in the speakers, uh, send me an email. Um, Alex will include my email in the uh, video. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching this. I'm sure you're glad that we're not doing another unboxing. That will be the next one. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Adrian from Audio Excellence. Bye-bye.